to. Praise God. Can you, now y'all can hear me. Oh, well, I'm trying to talk too loud. He's a good God. He gives us courage, amen, and we've just been invited in into everybody there, and we're glad you could join us on the internet, and we're talking a little bit about Nehemiah. We're in our VBS, and so welcome. We're at, at our, the, the sharing time for the adults or a little bit, little bit more mature. I think we're all kids at heart a little bit, right? But uh, we're here to talk about how God gives us courage. And so we're going to dig in and we're going to pray. Can we pray? Father, I thank you for each person that's here. There's a purpose and a plan. And according to your word tonight, let it be done. And I ask that you bless this word to our hearts, that when we leave here, we might take it to someone who needs Jesus. And we love you for it. And we pray that in that name, the name above all others, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. You can be seated if you like. So for those who just tuned in, we just read how Nehemiah was the cupbearer to the king. He had a large responsibility. And I'm thankful God uses us and has us just where we need to be, even though it doesn't seem like it. And he was able to ask for the needs of his homeland because, you see, Jerusalem had been burned with fire. The wall had been torn down, as we've been discussing here. And so he had to take courage to ask what he needed to from the king. So I got a little question. We have our sheets with you. If you look at your sheet, one of the questions I wanted to pose to us to think about tonight, what's something you had to ask your parents for as a kid? It might be, it might be something that's not on that sheet, but I had some different options listed down there. Uh, what was, what, what's the one that really stood out to you or something that maybe that's not on that sheet? What did you have to ask your parents for? Support? What kind of support in particular, if you don't mind my asking? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. Support in, in surgery. Who else? What else do you have to ask your parents for? Everything? <laughs> that kind of sums it up, but it doesn't make it too specific for us. What was, what was one of those everythings? You had to, you asking for diapers. Okay, so you were starting early. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Love. Amen. We did do love. <laughs> Somebody else said get a little specific. Money. I put that on one of, one of the ones on the sheet. The money. We definitely needed, needed, need money from time to time. Yeah. Cars. I, put, I think I put that on there, didn't I? Maybe. Yeah, a car. You want a car? Say that, that first part again. Grace. Yeah, amen. Amen. Mm hmm That is a good one. That, that's, what is it? Candy? <laughs> I put on one of mine, gum. I would always walk up to my church. You know, you'd be in church, and it would be kind of like this. You know, you're talking along, and oh, you're sitting out there. And my dad had some of the best gum that I ever, it, it actually would kind of be like a juice in your mouth when you would chew it. And, oh, I want some of that gum. Mm -hmm, it did. It was squirted in my mouth. I thought that was the funnest thing as a kid. So I would ask for a lot of gum to get me through church. That is true. That is true. And we, we as adults have to kind of steer that will toward more towards him, <laughs> more towards where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Those are all good. That's a good answer. I didn't probably think quite as spiritual as you, you did on that. <laughs> I was asking for some of that. <laughs> no, it's good. You're right. You're right. Uh, one of the things, what I put on here, we we wanted a, my brother and I wanted a cat. And so we, we asked and asked and asked for that cat. And when we finally got that cat, uh, you know, that cat is still legendary in my brother's mind because of all the, all the, the work we had to put in to ask. A puppy, <laughs> dogs, yeah, kids, most kids love animals, and so they, they really do, and it's awesome. Welcome, welcome, come on in, we'll get you a pen if you need it, we're filling out that sheet, we have not even started, we're on the top part, what did you have to ask your parents for, what's something you had to take, what's that, playing sports, yeah, get permission to play sports, that's right, yeah, sometimes they, it didn't always come automatically. What's that? Life advice. That's good. 
That's a real good one. Though some of y'all have some real good answers. I, <laughs> I was looking for the gum, <laughs> chewing gum. So that's good. It, it, the, the point I have in this little exercise is for this. It took courage to ask that. It took courage. But there's a psalm that goes something like this. I need you more today than I did yesterday. And we need, even in this day, we need to take courage more than we ever have because there's some big things I believe that we need to be asking for and I believe God wants to do in our lives. And we should be willing to be, hey, let's ask him for the good stuff because he, he has that for us. Because Nehemiah, he wasn't just asking for the gum, was he? He wasn't just asking for the little things. He was asking for the big things like several of y'all have mentioned tonight. So I want to encourage us that, that, that courage is something we, we've got to shoot for. What is courage? Let me open that up. We talked about Nehemiah had courage here because we just read that he he had asked the king. And you did talk to the king just ordinarily. He took courage to ask the king for what he needed to um, what? How would you define courage? Amen. Amen. What's that? Blind faith. Blind faith. Okay. Bravery. Bravery. Yeah. Good. Anybody else? Courage. Good answers. One the way I would put it, for me, is standing when someone else would run. It was kind of like what standing when somebody else would run. And so this age is hostile to God. It's hostile to so much good. We've got, we're going to have to have courage. Nehemiah needed to rebuild Israel. And in a lot of ways, I believe there's, a, there's walls that need to be built in this country, amen, built back up that have been torn down. And we've got to rebuild that. And we just don't need to have talk, but we need to act. And so what the, on the sheet I have with you, um, there's some blanks we'll fill in and talk about. And, I, and again, I hope you can take this with you to try to encourage you to, hey, there's, there's courage for us. Because Nehemiah had a plan he had to bring to pass. So he had to bring some things himself before he could bring the plan to pass for, for God. And so that's where we're talking about tonight in these verses. And so we're going to go through these a little bit here and, and just dig in. Uh, so first one here we have Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 1 where pastor gary already is he brought himself to god i believe that's your first blank there he brought himself to god and i'm having these you know if you if you hear me say it you could remember if you hear and see it you're more likely to remember if you hear and see it and write it it it, it just makes it all the more you're going to remember this that's why we're that's one of the reasons we're doing this tonight I used to do this all the time as a youth pastor, and we would have ways of taking pages and giving away candy, too. So we can give away candy if y'all want to for filling out your pages, but <laughs> <laughs> what's that, dollar bills? <laughs> I'll take some, too. He brought himself to God. Chapter 1, he, he started praying, and Sister Ruth alluded to this earlier. If you go back in Chapter 1, uh, Nehemiah needed, there was a need. He realized, hey, my city's on fire. So what did he do? Around the time of November, around Thanksgiving time, if I read my Jewish calendar, right, he started praying. And four months later, he was still praying in the month of Nisan, which is like around March. So you do the math, December, January, February, March. Four months, 120 days, he was praying and he was believing. Amen, brother? That was, that's where that comes from, that they were, they were talking about. And he was standing before the king, and he, he uh, had been praying a long time, though, before he ever came to do what he needed to do. Who, uh, what is it, the brother, you said, if you're praying when you're in trouble, you're already in trouble? It's, it's, it's exactly right. There's a, there's a preparation that comes when we seek God. And, come. and uh, he, he sought God for these four months. And Lord, not to just say we believe in God, but we act on faith. Act on faith. Sometimes we got to come to him. Sometimes we got to talk to him, maybe even for a little while. Spend some time with God. Because that truly is where the courage comes from, is spending that time with him, even if it takes a little bit longer. Uh, this isn't in my notes, but it was said that Martin Luther prayed four hours a day. Martin Luther's a very famous Christian guy. He started, he actually became, was the first Protestant, really. And he started the Lutheran church, and he prayed four hours a day. 
and he found out he got more done by praying four hours a day than when he didn't. It's ironic. You think, well, how does that even work? But sometimes the more we give to God, the more he's able to take the rest of our time and make it count, give us courage to do what we need to do. I don't know about you, but I can spend a lot of time just kind of wasted because I'm not focused on his plan. And I'm stressing to us, and for all those out there, we need to take, take courage and be willing to keep talking. I know we hear a lot of sermons on prayer, but we need to keep them, keep them coming because we need to be prayers, prayer warriors. And uh, we must know. One thing I want to stress in this, in praying, is that prayer really helps us to get to know Him. Not just our needs, not just the things that maybe we, we often think about. We need to know Him by our prayers. It's a way of communicating to know Him. Because you see, one of the things I'm really wanting to stress and to have you take away from this is we need courage, but we need to know the courage giver. We have to be connected to Him. You have to, This isn't something that, it's like if I sit here and talk about honesty or if I talk about a whole host of other things, I, I could wag and say, you need to be honest, but sometimes it's hard. Can anybody get an honest thing? Sometimes it's hard to be courageous. You need him. You need Jesus. I need Jesus for what's coming up ahead in this world. And my stress to us is that we need to make sure that we're connected to him with a constant dialogue and conversation going. Does that make sense? I hope so. I hope it does for us. Because we need to be connected to him to, to have that courage. And if we're not connected to him, we're very vulnerable. Anybody know that word? That's a big word, but it's, it's, a, it's a tough word for us because we are very vulnerable if we're not connected. So I want to ask us, we're talking about prayer. I want us to think for a, a little bit, what could interrupt our prayers? What could be something that could stop our prayers? That could be little or big. That could, what's that, the dog? The dog, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I heard several things. Cell phone. Oh, that's a bit. That's probably the bit, maybe the biggest one at this point. We get out. You know, we all have it on our screens. Oh, somebody texted. We have to check it right then. You know, it's just how we are. TV, TV definitely can. Oh yeah. What's that? Kids. That's for sure. <laughs> Husband. Okay. <laughs> Not looking at your neighbor. Yeah. Anybody else? Don't want to miss any. What? What's something that interrupts our prayers? We got. We got a bunch of them. It's good. I want us to think about it. Your job, that's right. Job, we, we all have to work, right? But sometimes it, it'll, it'll get in the way of, of what we need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. And for those out there talking about vacation, sometimes... We try to get away, but yeah, I'm glad we can't run from the presence of God, and we shouldn't run from the presence of God because we need His. We need His help wherever we go. I believe that as long as we're in this life, we always have to be ready. We have to be prepared and ready. You know, we can take a vacation. I'm not saying you don't relax, but we always have to be like keep my guard, keep my guard, and keep on the ready because who knows how God might use us. The point I'm saying: Do we need some need something here? Yeah. Sometimes run out of ink. But I, I wanted to stress to us here, for every interruption, there's, a, there's something that needs to be in our heart to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to take a stand and I'm not going to let that stop me from doing this. Whatever your interruption or my interruption is, we've got to take that stand and say, no, not today. I've got, I've got someone, somewhere else, something more important I have to be, someone more important I've got to be with. Because that's how Nehemiah made it. Nehemiah brought his faith out into the public, and when we bring our faith out into public, uh, it it needs it's where it needs to be, and that's how we're going to get anything done to truly show courage, to show what God has for us. Artaxerxes, the king that we talked about here, he was the king of Persia. He was a powerful man. According to legend, Artaxerxes killed his father's assassin. You remember the name Xerxes? That is actually was in the book of Esther. If you look at her, up her story, uh, Xerxes was Esther's husband. And Xerxes was assassinated, actually, before uh, too long. And Artaxerxes, his son, ended up killing the assassin and the assassin's sons. So my point was, is with that, is that 
he brought his faith out into public to a man who was not known for being the, the nice guy. He was known, somebody known for being um, tough and rough. And Nehemiah was going to be sad and let his emotions show, even if that meant danger. And that's why he was probably afraid. He was very afraid here to come out. When I was, when I was young, there, you ever had, uh, you knew God was telling you to do something. You knew that he was telling you to do something, but it was hard. You were scared to death to do it. There was a time that I, I was sitting in the car and I knew that the Lord had me, was going to have me talk to some people about him. And you pray and you pray and we, we encourage us to pray. That is a good thing to do, but there comes a time you got to go. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You got to take action. You got to do something about it. Take courage to bring that faith out to somebody else that needs it. And so we'll do a little bit of another thought here. Fear is something that we, we know. What was something that made you afraid as a kid? When you were young, what's something that made you afraid? Well, that's what, actually what I had down first. I would go around the house there killing spiders that would get into the corner because I, I, I did not like spiders. They could, they could be pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. 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 We just don't, you just don't know. That's for sure. Somebody else, what, what was your fear as a kid? Snakes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Mice and snakes. Okay. Yeah. One would help the other, but mice and the snakes, right? <laughs> but, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Anybody else? I, I could give you some. Frogs, okay, okay. Drowning, yeah, that's pretty pretty serious, yeah. Yeah, water can be a big one. Oh, I still struggle with heights. I still struggle with heights. It's something that, <laughs> I don't like glass elevators, yeah. You love them, okay. <laughs> you like my brother. Let him draw, let him draw for all you care, right, and it has... Okay, that's a big one. Oh, yeah, the dark is a, uh, I had to have a nightlight all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you say swimming? Yeah. Who? Yeah. <laughs> that would be one you could be afraid. And, and we could use different examples. There was a man one time that he was awarded the Coast Guard Silver Medal. He actually saved a little girl from drowning, and he didn't know how to swim. I was reading his story, so you never know. And I guess I'll segue that into this. We have to get through those fears, don't we? One way or the other, we have to let God and, and showing us the, the truth of life that, hey, spiders aren't, aren't what we think they are. We have to realize that, hey, we got to take a stand and have courage. And as we've said earlier, another definition of courage is not the absence of fear, but what's do, doing what's important anyway in spite of the fear. And so as I... as I know it was in the, the sheet we, we handed out from Pastor Gary and Sister Ruth. We need the Spirit's help. The Holy Spirit will give us help to overcome all our fears. And that's what happened for Nehemiah. He was able to have a connection to, to Almighty God who gave him an overcoming in all that he had. And I, I'm thankful that there was a there was a example set for me of just pushing through all those things. Uh, my parents aren't here tonight, so I, and they may not probably won't see this either out there on the internet. But I'll brag on them anyway. I, if you if you heard this, pretend you hadn't. Okay, my mom taught third grade when I was younger at school, and I would I would be sick. You know, when you're a kid, you get sick a lot, right? So I'm sitting in her class, kind of waiting through, listening to my mom. She took prayer requests in class. This is a public school, and she was taking prayer requests, and just like she kind of like she does here, and would pray for them. I, I appreciate an example like that. My dad was, I had his class when I was older. He taught over here at the Logan County High School, and he was, 
he was teaching history, and he, he would never be afraid to talk about God. And so I'll brag on them to say it's good to have that example of people that took courage because it helps us to take courage. And you know what? You and me, we can be that one to take courage. And guess what a lot of times happens when we do take action? Somebody else will too. Somebody else is going to join up and, and take action. I believe it was Stonewall Jackson was saying about the Union Army. This is not in my notes either, so bear with me. But he, there was a guy that was riding by, and he was real brave and styled. And one of the sharpshooters said, I just couldn't bear to shoot him because he looks so brave and he looks so, so nice. And Stonewall Jackson said, no, 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 you kill that one first before any of the others, and then all the others will run away because he's the, he's the brave one. And so you don't, you don't ever let those guys go just because they look nice. And you know what? That's what God has called us to do, to be that one to take a stand. And when the devil shoots his darts at us, we're going to be okay because, hey, we know who our protector is. We know who our, our guard is. He will watch us. And so we've got to take the principles that we learn and actually live them out in the places that we go, in the places we go. So if I'm just thinking about where we go, where is a place that we really need to show courage? Nehemiah had to show it in front of the king and what he did. Where do we need to show courage out there? Yeah, where out in the world, brother? I'm going to push you a little bit. Every, where is everywhere? Amen. Amen. Our brother said everywhere because everywhere we're going to get push, we got to push back. I'm repeating it for them out there. Amen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you remember that <laughs> yeah amen amen we got it we we do have to push back when we, we we receive some resistance from whatever happens um sometimes i'll, I'll give it a, anybody else have an example our brother said everywhere but work is a big one work is a really big one because we're going to get some pushback from about everybody the public the ones we work with the ones that are a boss all all of the above we're going to get it. Yeah, I believe that. I know you all talk to them, and it's really good. For those who don't know, we've got the lab cab here, and it, and they, they I know you know, they keep a good conversation going on those rides, and it's good. And it's good. It makes a difference. It makes a difference for people that need it. Uh, one place that it, you may need some courage to push back in as, as much as it is. And, and I actually thought of him because I had a bowling class in, in college. And, brother, I, I wish that was one of my few B's. It was one of my B's in college because I couldn't, I, couldn't I couldn't keep it straight. But the, the point is, in college, you need to you – need, in college. In sports or activities you're doing like that, it could, you really have to have a courage to keep your faith. Sometimes courage is – doing the right thing but also not doing the wrong thing you know one of the places sometimes our mouths can get us into trouble sports activities things like that it gets us into trouble and and it will cause us to blow our witness and it, we need to have courage to say hey i made a mistake i bowled it in the gutter it's okay it's okay i'm i'm gonna keep going on to the next thing I, courage to go to court oh that's a bit oh, amen to that amen to that Absolutely. We have to stand for what's right. And I, I just encourage us here, let our, let's let our courage not just stay hidden under, but come out in the open because he has a place for us. And it doesn't matter who you are. All of us have a place we can show that courage. Lord, help us to. Lord, help us to. Can we put up verse 4, Pastor Gary? So one of the things I want to stress to us, and we're... We're rolling through this here. Nehemiah also in verse 4, he brought his ears to God. And I believe that's, we're on number 3, right? He brought his ears to God. We need to bring our, our ears to God in the way. Because you see, when we hear from God, we have to continue to hear from God. In other words, I can't just listen once and just say, well, that's all I got to do. God has called us to continue to listen to him, to continue to, to have a connection with him. It's very easy, my point is, to let down our guard. Does, does that make sense? It's very 
easy to let down our guard. I heard from God. I'm good now. And, and then, then that's, that's it. Nehemiah in this book, we have an example of 14 prayers that he prayed. All kinds of different prayers. It, it, uniquely in the Bible, Nehemiah is, is a lot of its first person. And he has all his prayers that he put in it. And he, he, was, he was going after God. He needed to know what to do next with the king. Because, you see, he was praying and now he's got the king's ear. And it's very easy sometimes that, hey, we made it this far. And then we kind of lose it from there. So... In, let me use a sports analogy because we're going to be the clip we're going to show is going to be sports. But don't worry if you don't watch sports much, you'll still I think you're still going to get something pretty awesome out of it. But if you if you play a good first half, let's say it's basketball, first half in basketball, does that mean you win the game? You got you got two halves, right? You have to you have to finish strong too. That's what God. That's my point here. God has called us not just to listen to Him once, but to continue to have a connection here there. And well, how do we have that connection? We start in the grace of Jesus and we end there. Don't get disconnected from his grace or his, his good that he has for you. Keep praying and don't forget. Don't forget to pray. And, and Lord, help us to put him and care about what he says and care about what he has for us and not just our own ideas. We can't take it for granted that we have the, the voice of God coming. So we have to keep our ears open, y'all. We have to keep our ears open because he has something to say and we've got to let the Lord speak to us. And so it says here he was praying to the God of heaven, trying to keep that that flow going with what he needed to hear. All right, let's let's go a little further. We haven't read these verses. So I want to read verses five through seven in Nehemiah. We said that he he brought he brought himself to God. He brought his faith out him out and he brought his ears to God, and we're going to talk about the next one here as well. So what did Nehemiah want to do? What was his plan? I, and I said to the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. Verse 6, that's a big request. Remember, he's bearing the cup for the king. He's got a responsibility. He's got a job to do. Then the king said to me, the queen also sitting beside him, how long will your journey be? And when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set a time. And verse 7. Furthermore, I said to the king, if it pleases the king, let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river, that they may permit me to pass through till I come to Judah. Amen. So let's stop there and go to number 4. On your sheet, number 4 says, he brought his feet to God. He brought his feet to God. Sometimes God calls us to go. You know that? God will call us to go. We may have a good place and a good position where we are, but God has called us to go and do something else. I knew a pastor one time. He was a great guy. He, he had a great church up in Henderson, it was in Henderson, Kentucky, and it was a large church. He was there, and he was praying for God to send people to, to, mission, to the mission field. You, can you guess what happened? He got called and sent to the mission field. He had to leave that plum position at the church and have to go take a much lesser salary to go to Egypt is where he actually ended up going to the, to the Muslim folks there. He was called, and he, had, and he had to take the cut. He had to do, but he went. Because, you see, it might not seem like it to us, but the safest place in the universe for you and me is the center of God's will. Can I say that again? The safest place for you and me in the whole universe, safer than anywhere else that you can think of, it's the center of God's will. The center of God's will. Wherever he has you, even if it seems dangerous or it doesn't seem right, it's still going to be okay. If he's speaking to your heart something, we can't neglect that. We, he's called us to have feet. And it's true. In, in the New Testament, it says, how beautiful are the feet that bring the gospel you got something in you, and we, I've got something in me, that if we take it somewhere, oh, it's going to be blessed and glorious. But we have to be willing to say, hey, I'm going to put these two big feet forward and go where I need to go. Makes sense? we got to, we got to go where he calls us to go. We've got to move. There's an old song that says this, when the Lord gets ready, you got to move. Y'all ever heard that one? When the Lord gets ready. Okay, I'm not going to sing. Hi. <laughs> I, one time, I, there was a guy, he was, he was in a coma, and I started singing to him, and he woke up. <laughs> it woke him up, and I, I think he was ready for me to quit. <laughs> he was ready for me to quit, but, and that's, that's true. He was a dear brother. But anyway, I, we won't sing that, but I hope we live it out. When the Lord gets ready, let's move. Let's do what he's called us to do, because God may call us to talk to someone, move somewhere different, 
maybe we got to just keep going where we are when it's difficult. Sometimes you got to keep staying. You got to stay and do what you got to do. Do it. Can I say it again? Do it. Don't don't stay where we are. You know, that's that's not the safe place. We got to go and do it. All right. Hey, let me ask this, and this gets a little bit more personal, and some might not want to share, but has there been anybody that you know that the Lord asked you to do something, and you had to do it, you had to move, move forward and do something? I could tell stories on that, but I'd rather let y'all talk. Okay. That's a literal one there, for sure. Yeah, yeah, amen. You do what God tells you to do. Who else? Anybody else? Something that you knew you had to do and you couldn't rest till you did it. Did you have to talk to somebody or help somebody or give somebody something? Giving is giving is hard. Sometimes we need a little prompting. Anybody? Oh. Oh. Amen. And it's good that you, you said that. Amen. Sometimes it just takes that little bit to open up the floodgates and just say, hey, we're going to do this. And then, like we talked about earlier, sometimes when one person takes courage and says, I'm going to do this when everybody else says it's not right, I'm going to do this, then guess what? Other people start getting what they need to receive too. It'll happen in a church service and it can happen a lot of other places too. Anybody else? Amen. That's that's kind of the, what I was trying to say. Yeah. She was talking about, if you couldn't hear, just step it out and talk about a Jericho march in particular, just being obedient to what God has for you in a service. When you do that, God will work through that and bless others as long as we're connected to him. Um, one of the things I have to do, sometimes you you got you to gotta check yourself and make sure, Lord, is this really? Sometimes you do have to check it because there is a, there is a we get emotional and we... Many people have been very, the word I would use is disillusioned because they thought they heard from God and they didn't. They didn't. Um, in the Pentecostal church, and again, this is not in my notes, forgive me, you know, speaking in tongues, right? Speaking in tongues originally when it started in the Pentecostal church, people thought it was to go overseas and be missionaries so they could talk to the people in their language. Uh, and they would learn the they would have a language given to them they wouldn't have to learn, but that's not true. They went over there and they started speaking to the people in, the, in tongues, and they were like, "What? Well, it was it was it wasn't right. It wasn't what God had." But they were willing to stick it out anyway. But it's very my point is sometimes we get kind of our own ideas about stuff, and we can get disillusioned. And I just encourage us let's keep that connection to God, and then He'll keep our feet good. Amen. Speaking in tongues is awesome, by the way. I'm not in no way am I putting that down. But there's, that was not the purpose that God had for it, for those missionaries. We have to stay connected to him to find the purpose he has for us. All right. And, and one thing I want to say, when we work, God will be working for us. We already said Artaxerxes, the king in this story. We don't know his exact connection to Esther. You remember the book of Esther, the queen? who yeah, He was definitely connected some way to Esther. And he already knew about the Jewish people. And he already, probably for a young age, was influenced by, by Jewish folks and their God. He was receptive to what they had to say. And so my point is this. When we take a step out, have faith, because God is already working in what needs to be done. Oh, sorry.
That's true. I mean, yeah, you got Xerxes, you got Artaxerxes, yeah, you roll down through the king list there. So the the point is that, that I'm, I'm hitting at here is that um, God is working in people's hearts already. There's already a, a, a plan that's being worked out in advance when we take that step of faith, and he's ready to work when we step out. And so I just encourage us, when, we're, when we bring our feet, God is already bringing his, his awesome, mighty power to our needs. All right, and we're ready for number five, I believe, on the sheet there. And we're set to go to eight, so we're going we're gonna to make it okay. And it says in, in these scriptures, Nehemiah brought himself to others. He stayed vigilant. I believe he, it says brought himself to others. So Nehemiah asked the king here, he said, hey, I need, a lot of, I need a lot of stuff. I need a lot going on here. And then it says here in this verse, verse 9, Then I went to the governors in the region beyond the river and gave them the king's letter. And the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. So this is pretty awesome here. Uh, he has the whole army with him, it seems like here. Half, one of the things I was saying, it was a lot of troops that he got. And so I, I do encourage us here, courage isn't blind. There, there sometimes is a preparation that has to come into it. There is a, there is a line between courage, because it, it's a fine line between being courage and being stupid. You know what I'm saying? And we don't want to be stupid. I don't, we don't, we don't want to do that. Sometimes we wish, I, I was reading, it's, sometimes it's a fine line. I wish it was a big fence there, <laughs> but it's not sometimes. And one of the ways that we're not foolish is to be careful and also bring others along with us into this. And so what I mean by that is, Instead of just trying to do it on our own, we actually have folks to help us overcome. In other words, we're not supposed to be the Clint Eastwood of, of this. We're not supposed to be the Han Solo, if you like that. We're not on our own here. we got to have help. Amen? John Wayne, okay. Yeah, John Wayne, yeah. The lone cowboy who, who, who's out there, Gary Cooper. Is that another one, I think? Gary Cooper, yeah. Somebody that is, is kind of by himself and there's nobody to help him. We don't need, we really don't need to have. Now, if you're by yourself, God's with you. But if we can have that help, I believe he's called us to get it. Amen. It's so many times he's called us to have that help there for us. And we need to be prepared with that because um, it's good to get help because we can have those times. All of us have those times that we are vulnerable, vulnerable. And Lord, help us. Lord, help us with that. I had another, some notes that went in this, this, took this verse a little different way. If you go back in the book of Ezra, Ezra and Nehemiah go together. Ezra didn't have any troops with him when he went back to Jerusalem uh, some years before that. Sometimes God works in different ways. And I do want to say this. One of the things about courage is to be ready whatever he calls us to do. The Bible tells us this in the New Testament, always be prepared to give an answer that is talking about giving an answer in that case but for whatever is coming he's called us to be prepared be encouraged be encouraged though that hey as we're connected to him we're gonna we're gonna have those connections to others to help us do what we need to do all right all right one la we got one last blank i think it's our last blank isn't it last blank courage means to persevere and so i had some i believe persevere verse 19 and and uh, pastor gary had this in some of his notes talking about this we've got to persevere but when sambal the horonite tobiah the ammonite official and geshem the arab heard of it they laughed at us and despised us and said what is this thing that you are doing will you rebel against the king if you take a stand for god there's always going to be something that's going to come against you we've talked about that here recently we also talked about it that god helped nehemiah to overcome but in the, in the battle, it's hard to see that. He's called us to persevere. Keep going. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Because so many times, we just don't, we have the right. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to do this. We just got to stick with it. I was reading this. I thought this was neat. They did a study one time of, it was a study of 10 individuals to see how much people would stick with the truth. They're actually going with the truth. And let me read it so I make sure I get it right. The leaders of the study, they would make lines of cards. It was not a real hard project. The, the idea is, is that the, you, you had to pick out the longest line of these ten. But the trick of this study is nine of these people were plants. In other words, they were told to raise their hand the, the second highest 
line of cards. And so, in other words, they were fud they were fibbing. And the, the real test was on the one that was out there. And what it is, that one would see the longest line of cards, and he would raise his hand. But the study said 75% of the time, because everybody else raised their hand on the other one, he would put his hand right back down and go along with them. Does that make sense? A little complicated to explain. But the point is, he, the, the one that was the real test subject knew what was right, but because the others had that peer pressure and raised their hands, he put his hand back down for the truth. So if that makes sense, I hope it does to us. Many times we've got to stick with what God calls us to no matter what anybody else says because we know what his word says. That's how we're going to make it. That's how we're going to survive in this. And, and my encouragement for us is we've got to keep going with the truth and persevere. So I, I want to ask us this, one more, one more question here. What's something as we take with this, and good for us to think about for on the Internet, what's something that we need to persevere with in life? What's a specific thing that God has called us to persevere with? Faith. To grow in that faith. Something else. Hmm? Amen. Witnessing to, to talk to somebody about Jesus is absolutely something we have to persevere in. There's plenty of these. It's intended to be a broad question. Yes. Amen. Amen. We absolutely need to persevere in life. Okay, yeah. Mm. One of the things that's, yeah. One of the things we, yeah. Yeah, amen. We stand on the Bible. One of the things we can do is we can get very distracted on things, and we would help us not to be distracted because it is very easy on all the, the ideas that we kind of lose our focus. One thing I do want to encourage us to have courage with is your family. A lot of us have family that we're struggling with. Have courage. Can I get an amen to that? you got people that need, in your family, that need, you need to take courage. They need to see courage from us, from you. And we need to take courage there. Is there anybody else, some area of our lives we need to take courage in? Your marriage, amen. Marriage is absolutely precious, established by God. And we have to, we're talking about you know, a couple getting married here, we've got, to, we've got to take courage to keep our marriages strong and firm with him in Jesus. Connect, talk about that connection. Oh, we need that connection there more than, than with so much else. Anybody else? All right, we'll go ahead and we'll wind this here. Courage is, is keeping on. We Remember we talked about that, to keep standing when others would run. And I want to encourage us that one person can make a difference. You can make a difference. Not the person beside you, not the person you heard about at some point. You can have courage because the same God that helped them can help you too to have that courage. And I just encourage us with that, that we... we um, take a stand for those areas he's called us to have courage and as we said yes we need to persevere but we can't do that without jesus come on in welcome uh let's see i believe you are with uh, miss k maybe in the kitchen if you want to head that way all right i think we i hope i steered him the right way so i want to encourage us as i've, I've said several times here we need jesus to do this y'all you and I need Jesus. You and I need to have a connection to him because it's not just an inspirational talk. We need to have him in our hearts. We need to have a relationship with him that builds because if we don't, the courage is just not, it's not going to come consistently like we need it to. Amen. All right. I think you missed. <laughs> All right. So I, I want to pray for us here, and then we're going to stop the video because the, the video I'm going to show, I can't probably do that online for us, so they'll probably ding me about several ways. But 
I do want to pray for us here. Can you just pray for us? And can you intercede that the Lord, Lord, give me a connection to you that's, that's not yesterday's connection, not just as little as I can get by with, but a real connection with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe there's some folks that need to have some courage in their lives right now. And Father, I pray in the precious and holy name of Jesus that you have help a real connection to be there. If there's anybody that's not born again, if they're not saved, this is a good time to make sure they're right with you, Lord, to admit their sins, to confess you as Savior. Because, Lord, that connection is the only way we're going to have the courage to make it. And I just pray in the name of Jesus, anyone through the power of the Holy Spirit that needs to receive this will tonight and won't wait any longer, whenever now is, that they will accept you. And, Father, I do want to pray, too, that we have courage as people, dear God, connected to you, that you will give us the courage that we need to stand for you and not be afraid of anything. And we love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. For those out there on the Internet, now not us here, but those out there on the Internet, we love you. We're going to stop the video now. We love you, and well, thanks for joining our VBS. We'll see you soon. Christian Life, God bless you.